guys, it's Kristen. Welcome back for another polymer clay earring video. This is another video in our artist spotlight series where I am featuring polymer clay artists from all over. They are taking time out of their busy schedules to share with you some tutorials on some of their favorite tips and tricks and techniques for polymer clay earrings. Please show them your support by giving this video a thumbs up and leaving us a comment down below. I'm also going to have all of their social media and websites linked in the video description down below, as well as on the screen in just a few minutes. So check them out, support them, show your appreciation for them taking time to film these tutorials for you. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. I'm so excited to share with you guys Amanda of Concord Customs. You can find her on Instagram and Facebook. She releases a polymer clay earring collection once a month and she also has ready to buy tumblers available. Her collections have been named after women in her life and they are loosely inspired around their personal styles. I absolutely love her earrings. She's super talented. Make sure to go check her out, pick up a tumbler, pick up a beautiful pair of unique earrings and let's jump into her tutorial. Hi there, this is Amanda from Concord Customs and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on my flower skull, cow skull earrings. Okay, I'm gonna start off with a color palette today. Um, for our base background, we have Primo Black. For the skull itself, we have Primo Gold. Um, for the leaves, we have Craftsmart brand, and I think this is called Olive. And then for the flowers, for the roses, I decided to do Primo White mixed with Granite. A few tools that I will be using today. Um, acrylic roller, it's a staple. I also have um, just a piece of acrylic for me to work on. I have my tissue blade, a small piece of burlap for texture. I have a very small circle cutter. This is from Amazon. It came in a large pack. These, these are from Wilton. Um, I did get them in a fondant um, making kit years ago. You have this silicone brush, very pointed. This I purchased on Amazon and I use this for the leaves. And then I do have this as well. Um, it's called a pin pin. I purchased this a while ago off of 143 vinyl. I do also use Sculpey Bacon Bond base cutter and then I also use a one and a quarter circle. So I will start with um, my base. I'll be using the black. Just want to adhere it to the table. Place my burlap on. And I'm just going to texture my base clay with this burlap, just to give it a little extra texture. Okay, so next I am going to cut out my circles. Again, this is a one and a quarter circle cutter. I use the, um, I use a circle cutter. We're going to fold it like a taco and then fold it once more. So I use the circle cutter, um, just to make sure that I have the same amount of clay for both of the skulls. I want them to be as, as similar as possible. I'm going to roll that into a ball. Again, fold it like a taco. You're pushing all of that air out. 
holding it again and making sure we don't have any air in that. And now we're able to form it into a Interrupting this video for one quick minute just to make sure that you know about all the amazing resources that we have for you over in our Etsy shop for polymer clay artists. So the first one is the complete guide to polymer clay earrings. This is a step-by-step -step guide. All the details of the best clays to use, conditioning your clay, baking your clay, literally everything is in this ebook, more than we can cover in videos and things like that. Um, just because there's a ton of it, um, a huge resource list with links and that sort of thing. So that's over in the Etsy shop. Another thing is the getting started on Etsy book. It's a complete guide to getting started on Etsy. So if you're just starting out and you're interested in selling your polymer clay earrings, this is a great resource for you to be able to hit the ground running, get those items listed and hopefully start making sales. Another one is our brand new product photography ebook. This one is huge. If you're selling online, your product photos need to stand out and be bright and beautiful. And sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if you don't have much experience. So this product photography ebook will walk you through the steps of getting fantastic photos with, um, you know, not super expensive equipment and things like that. Just little tricks and things that you can use to get the best photos possible. And lastly, we have polymer clay color recipes. So I have tons of kits over there with a huge variety of colors. I have a fall one that's out now, a Christmas one. Um, we've got pinks, purples, one with just like a wide variety. So those recipes tell you exactly what colors to blend together to make whatever color it is that you're looking for. So that's also a great resource for polymer clay artists. All right, I'm done with the little advertisement in this video. I hope you'll check us out on Etsy. The link will be in the description box down below and we are at etsy.com slash shop slash dash and dainty. All right, let's get back we to the have a perfect little ball shape. Um, if you look at the skulls, they are more elongated. So um, they do have an indent here near the eye sockets and then they get long and skinny. So that is what we're going to do. So I take my thumb and pointer finger and hold the back of this where the skull will be and I just pinch with my other hand pinch and drag it down do kind of give it a bit of an arch shape towards the nose area a little bit. Okay, and there is a bit of an indent um, near their eye socket. So I do kind of push it in a little bit there. And that looks pretty good. Check your work against the other one. Make sure they're approximately the same. For the antlers, I'm just going to take a small piece here and cut off a little bit. I'm going to roll this out and I'm going to look and see. How much horn I want lengthwise. That looks pretty good. I'm going to just cut it there and point the ends with my fingers. Pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to work on shaping the skull. So this is where my 
small ball tool and the hook tool comes into play. I'm gonna take the small ball tool and right at this crest up here where um, you've made the little indents and the side of the skull starts to meet the top, I'm going to just take my ball tool and work it in there. Okay. I do like um, being able to see the eye sockets from the top of the skull as well. Because um, these will be worn on like facing forward. So you want somebody to be able to see what this is as well from the front. You can look, make sure you're lined up and work your ball tool. Okay, so next we're going to take our hook tool and kind of kind of give him a little smile. Do that on either side. Next, we're going to take our pin and draw a line all the way up the center to the top of his head. I think this is naturally where like the, the skull fuses And back to your hook tool. I'm using the small side this time, the number four. And I am just creating two little nostrils on the very tip of his nose. And now we are going to attach them to our base. Just a little bit of Sculpey Bacon Bond. And when I lay these down, I like to put the skull close to the bottom so that I have more room for flowers at the top. Okay. So now we're coming back to our horns. like to lay the horn in the very middle. And drape it almost. Um, and then at that point you can move it around if you would like. Kind of touch it to the back of the skull. And then move your horns in whichever direction you would like. And they both, the horns are hitting right around this halfway mark on my background. So they look, they look pretty good. So the leaves are fairly easy and I just basically take a slice out of my green and then chop into small squares. Um, they don't all have to be the same size squares and that's naturally, I mean, leaves aren't all the same size. Roll in your finger and you'll come to, you'll get them, you know, kind of fat at one end and point at the other end can do as many as you want. I typically do a lot of leaves um, just so I can have enough. Um, don't have to make more. I have gone ahead and um, done these leaves here. But I do take my silicone tool and start at the point with the point of the tool and push and drag down towards the fat side. 
do another one here. Going to push and drag. Okay, we have all of these leaves and I did start to put some on already. Um, I do grab them with my pen tool. Now we will move on to the roses. I will set these leaves aside because we are going to use them again to fill in after we attach our roses. I did run this through my pasta machine on a level four. Um, I use an Atlas. One, uh, 150 and I roll it out to a four so it's nice and thin. I'm going to use my small circle cutter and just cut out lots of tiny circles because these will be the petals for our roses. Okay, so roses. I am going to use my hand and the ball tool. And just while in my hand, I'm going to push down and roll it out and then pick it up with my fingers and set aside. Okay. So for large roses, I typically do around seven to 11 petals per rose. Uh, smaller ones, I, I stick to, to around four or five petals. It just depends on how thick and full you want them. So again, just pushing down and working out. You can kind of see now that they, they've got a little cup shape to them since you've used that ball tool. Okay, I've got a good amount here. So I can go ahead and show you one. And then um, I will work magic and speed this up and, and you'll be able to see them. Okay, so the first one I take, so we've used the ball tool in our hand like this, right? So this side is facing out towards the sky, this side was facing our hand. Going to roll it like a taco, like a, like a little burrito, okay? I'm gonna roll it up like a little burrito. That's the center. So grab another petal, the part that was facing your palm, you want it touching the flower, okay? You want the part that was facing the sky still to face outward. Your little seam here um, on your burrito, you're going to overlap that seam just a little bit and then spin that flower in your fingers, okay? Pick up your next piece. Again, that back that was facing your palm, you want it facing the rose and you want them slightly overlapped, okay? And spin. Now while we're doing this, I like to kind of fold some pieces out and down just a little bit so that they look more natural. Again, find your spot where your last petal was, overlap, and spin, okay? starting to see a rose now. Again, overlap. Stick it there and spin. Okay, now I do kind of like to roll the bottom a little bit in between my fingers to kind of create more of a stem to hold on to. And then I use my tissue blade and gently chop it towards my finger, okay? I take my pin and very gently 
find the very center of that burrito and wiggle it in there. Now this is my opportunity to add some bacon bond on the bottom. And now I can find my spot wherever I want this rose to go. Push it on there and twist my pin out gently. There she is. We have a rose. I'm going to fill this in with some leaves as well. Okay, I'm just covering up that little gap right there. And that top one looks pretty cute. I think we're done. I'm gonna add my markers where I will drill my holes and then into the oven they go. Thanks for watching this video today. I hope it was helpful to you. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Again, check out the artist's website and social media and show your support. Thanks for watching this video today and we will see you in our next one. Bye.